What's up guys? For those of you that have been following my channel and are subscribed to it, you've seen that I put out a couple of home automation videos. And I've been reading through the comments and it turns out that a couple of you are a little bit confused or have some misconceptions of home automation. So what I wanted to do is make a video of some of the top misconceptions that I've been reading on the comments section. So without further ado, let's get started. If someone steals your phone, they can go inside your house. Actually, this is much safer than if someone stole your house keys. The truth is, if someone stole your phone, assuming you don't have a passcode to get inside, all you need to do is log into your account using any computer and change your password. This will revoke access to your home automation app and the thief won't be able to do anything. The same can't be said if you lost your house keys. That would require you to change your door lock or have your lock rekeyed, which can cost money and can get expensive. If the battery dies on your phone, how will you open the door? Simple. Use the keypad on the door lock. Just enter your pin and unlock the door. Alternatively, you can also use a regular key. What if the battery dies on the door lock? The chances of that happening are unlikely. You can get notifications on your phone when the battery level is at a certain percentage that you specify. However, if you fail to change them out, you would have to resort opening the door using a regular key, which is why I'll always recommend to hide a key somewhere in your backyard where nobody will know. Using an NFC tag means anybody can open the door. 100% false. The NFC tag triggers an action using Tasker or a third-party application that has been pre-configured to your phone, which means it will only work on your phone or anybody else that has the correct apps installed with specific parameters on that device. Can I communicate with my home controller if I'm not connected to the same Wi-Fi network? Even though I already said this in part one, I will say it again. You can be anywhere in the world and control your devices. You can be in Hawaii sipping Mai Tais. There's a slight delay between Wi-Fi and cell network, but it's very minimal. Here is me turning the lights on and off, being on the same network. As you can see, it's instantaneous. Here is me turning the lights on and off using cell network. It's a really small delay, but nonetheless, you can be anywhere in the world. What if company goes out of business? Once purchased, your network will continue to operate as originally designed, regardless of external changes. A Z-Wave network does not require the internet to operate. There is no cloud to rely on. Even the secure HTTPS forwarding offered through Mi Casa Verde can be displaced with your own secure port forwarding setup. It costs too much money. Truth is that this type of home automation is fairly inexpensive, but the best part is that it's scalable and modular, which means you can build your system over time and expand as your budget permits. It's unnecessary, pointless, it's just a toy. Automating your home cinema and creating LED-based lighting scenes for parties might well be considered a little on the showy side, but intelligent zone heating control and all-out lighting functions are sensible, practical, and energy-saving ideas. Because of the wide range of uses, automating your home can either be as blingy and frivolous or as clever and useful as you like. Installation is too much work. Setting up and installing devices takes minutes. Given there is no wiring in a Z-Wave solution, there is no need for professional installation. Most Z-Wave devices are plug and play or battery operated. Others requiring in-wall installation are well documented and as long as you have a basic understanding of how your home is wired, you won't have a problem replacing outlets or switches. If you are unsure, you can hire a local electrician to install your switches for a fraction of the cost of a home automation dealer or installer. So hopefully this video cleared up a lot of these misconceptions that are out there and a lot of you are unfamiliar with this technology. Even though it's not new per se, uh, it's sort of new in the mainstream where a lot of people don't know about it. So hopefully that cleared up and uh, if you guys have any other questions, leave your comments down below. Definitely, if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up and feel free to reshare this with all your friends and family. I highly appreciate it when you guys do that. It helps grow the channel and you guys are awesome for doing that. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the show. I will see you next time. Adios. Turn on outside light. Affirmative, turning on outside light. What is the status of garage side door? 
garage side door is currently locked. 